1045, the team, your home for New York sports. And we're getting international right now. Uh, we are going to go live across the pond to speak to ESPN columnist for uh, ESPN the magazine. You've seen him on Sports Reporters, a, a bunch of shows. Howard Bryan, live from Wimbledon. Um, sir, you are sitting there enjoying this this beautiful thing. Some, some of the storylines for those of us who are novices to the world of tennis to really enjoy during Wimbledon. What are your favorite storylines so far? Well, I think the first thing, obviously, is the quest for Serena Williams. I think everybody can can appreciate, even if you're not a tennis fan, uh, a tennis legend who is winding down trying to trying to catch a record. Whether we're talking about Hank Aaron trying to catch a you know, an all time record, or or Peyton Manning trying to do it, I mean, it's it's very difficult watching this great champion with twenty twenty one Grand Slams trying to reach twenty two. And the body is giving out, the, the mind is giving out. It's, it's very clear that there's a lot of burnout there, and so it's interesting watching to see if she can get there. Obviously, on the, on the men's side, it's difficult with Americans because we haven't had an American, we haven't had an American reach a final since Andy Roddick in 2009. So it's been the, the, the country of Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi and John McEnroe and Jimmy Connors. It's kind of a drought here for American men's tennis. But obviously, the best player in the world, Novak Djokovic, no matter what nationality you are, he is might be the perfect tennis player. He's a great guy to watch. Howard Bryan joining us right now live from Wimbledon, uh, columnist for ESPN, the magazine, and many, many more uh, great uh, shows on ESPN. So you, you bring up Serena. Do you believe she'll be able to get it done? Well, I think I personally, well, I mean, what, what, what are our predictions really worth? I I did not predict her to win a major this year. I thought that the strain was very, and it was obvious last year, losing to Roberta Vinci when she was going for the calendar Grand Slam and to, she catch Steffi Graf last year. She, she made two finals since. She reached the final in the, at the Australian Open. She reached the final at the French Open. She lost them both. So it's not like she's far away, but goodness, it is difficult when you're watching uh, someone try to, to, to just get that last mile. It's, it's very similar to, to watching what we saw. I mean, even actually, you know, with Peyton Manning last year, the one thing about Manning, at least, you could see he was playing poorly, and the defense sort of got the Broncos to that championship. Serena's playing relatively well. She just can't get that last title. And so I didn't think she's going to get it, but, you know, this is her best tournament. If she does, it won't be that much of a surprise. I mean, she's only won this tournament six times. So if she's going to get one, this would be the one to get. Howard, you uh, you mentioned that you know for those of us who are already in that Olympic state of mind where we're we're ready to chant USA, the men's uh, side of the bracket uh, not very dominant with USA guys. If I'm watching and just wanting to get red, white, and blue, even though everybody's in all white, who are the guys that I'm I'm really kind of pulling for right now? Well, on the men's side, I think what you're really looking at is the is the, the next generation. There's a young kid, Taylor Fritz, who lost today. Big guy, six foot six. Uh, he lost today to the French Open, former French Open champ, Stan Wawrinka. He's a good kid to watch. Uh, obviously, the number one men's tennis player in the United States is John Isner. He's ranked 17th. And so there's not a lot of guys that you think have a chance to win. What we're really looking at is sort of the next generation of, of, of the younger players who are, who are a couple of years away, but, but they've got a pretty big future. Taylor Fritz, Jared Donaldson. Francis Tiafu, a lot of those young kids will be hearing from them in a couple of years. But as of right now, you know, if you're expecting to see an American on the podium in Rio, you might want to pick another sport. <laughs> Howard Bryant with us right here on 104.5, the team, your home for New York sports. Uh, Howard, I love Wimbledon just because of the tradition of it all, that you still have to wear all white. There's there's like an extra respect yeah. to the game. Why, is Wimbledon your favorite, and if so, why? Well, it, Wimbledon, is a, Wimbledon is, a, is a great tournament. It's the, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the dean of the tournaments. It's, it's where the tradition is. It's absolutely, you've got to wear your, all your whites. It's the, the oldest one, you know, 1877. It's the one that everybody wants to win. It's, the, it, it's, it's quirky because it's on grass, even though you've got other surfaces that are on clay. Obviously, the French Open is on clay, but you have so many more clay for t- tournaments. So for, for essentially two weeks, Two and a half weeks, they play tennis on grass, culminating in this unbelievable event. You know, I talk about, like, when you go to Yankee Stadium or you go to Fenway Park, 
because they sell memories. You walk in, up and down those quarters, they sell the memory of being there. It's the same thing when you come here. You look at all these champions, every stairwell, every hallway, you see some part of the of the legend of, of Wimbledon. And you get swept up in it. It's one of, it's one of those sports cathedrals that you want to go see at least once in your life. There's, there's really nothing like it. Great uh, to be joined by Howard Bryant right now. He's live at Wimbledon, uh, columnist for ESPN the magazine on almost every show, always with great takes. Um, the network itself today, we, just paying homage to both Pat Summit and Buddy Ryan. I know that you are uh, immersed in Wimbledon and tennis, but do you have any memories of either of those legends that you'd like to share real quick? Well, I never got to meet Pat Summit, and that's one of the it's it's. 2016 has been quite a year. It's just been it's been a devastating, devastating year. I was at the Muhammad Ali funeral uh, a few weeks ago, and now you've got Pat Summit and Buddy Ryan. Uh, I did not get to meet either one of them, which was too bad. Obviously, I really wanted to meet Pat Summit, and you know, Buddy, what can you what can you say? To me, I still say this, and people may disagree. You might go with the. 89 49ers or the 80, uh, 84 49ers, you might go with the, uh, with the 2000 Ravens or some of these other teams, but the most dominant football team I've ever seen is the 1985 Bears. And that remains true when I was watching them when I was in high school back in 1985, and it's still true now. I've never seen one single season defense dominate the way Buddy Ryan's team did. I mean, from not just from the scores, but also just the sort of freakish nature of their 46 defense where if everybody was on the line of scrimmage and and it was almost like every guy on that defense had a career year at the same time. They were unstoppable. You go back, I know I'm taking you back a little bit far, but the, the, the culmination of that for me was watching that Sunday afternoon game in Dallas where they beat the Cowboys 44 nothing, and it really sent two messages. One, that you were watching something that you've never seen before in terms of defensive dominance. My apologies to the 78 Steelers. But also that you were seeing the end of the Dallas Cowboys, which were not going to be rebuilt until Jimmy Johnson took over. Really seminal game, seminal season. And, and Buddy Ryan Buddy Ryan is, is as, as legendary a defensive presence in the NFL as you're going to find Howard Bryan, he is one of the best uh, columnists for ESPN and the magazine. And are, do you know when you're going to be on Sports Reporters or anything else again? Because I love when you're on these shows. I got to get back into the country first. So, <laughs> fair point. Fair uh, point. So after Wimbledon, I'm, I'm sure probably sometime late July, early August, I'll be back on. Well, we appreciate it. Safe travels, my friend, and thank you so much for making some time for us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you.